G'day, it's Oscar here from Drones for Hire. Just gonna have a quick chat today about RTK. We're gonna talk about what it is, how you use it, um, and why you might use it or not use it in some cases, and the different types of RTKs. Let's start with what RTK is. RTK stands for real-time kinematics. Basically how we use it in a spray drone context is we use it as an anchor point. You'll know if you've if you ever used GPS on your phone or a smartwatch or, or any small device that the GPS will drift around. So you'll see that your your point, your position point on the device will kind of jump around and, and it'll actually drift through the day. So it might move sort of up to about six meters is usually fairly common. What the RTK does is it creates a, a point in the system which is stationary. And because it's stationary, it tells all the other devices connected to it that any movement that has occurred is not a movement, it's actually a correction error or it's, it's a, a fault. And so it sends that correction error to the other devices so they can correct for it, correct for that GPS drift. So if we have a look at the whiteboard here, we've got our satellites up in the sky. Now they're all signaling to our different devices. So in this case, we've got our RTK down here. We've got our, our drone in the air. And we've got our little man with his remote control just here. And so all those devices are getting signals from the GPS system. You know, we might be up to 37 satellites or something like that. So lots of data coming in. But these two devices, they can and do move around during operations. So it's very hard for the system to recognize if that drift is one of these devices moving or drift, that change in GPS position. But this unit, our RTK, be it the RTK2 or the RTK3, it is stationary. We, we set it up at the start of day and we leave it set up. So if a GPS position changes on this device, it knows I'm stationary, I haven't moved, therefore, that change in GPS position, it turns into a correction error and it then sends that to our devices and they're logged. So in the case of mapping, for example, that will go to your drone and that correction error will be recorded with your, the photo that's taken to create your ortho mosaic. In the case of a spray drone, it will go to that spray drone so that it can correct its position accordingly. Now, the remote control, remember the remote control, you'll need to have an RTK dongle connected for, for, the, for it to be effective on your remote control. So really what, in most spray applications, what's happening is it's just sending to the drone, not the drone and the remote control, but it is possible to have it sent to the control. We get rid of this. Okay, so that's, that's the a, a real basic on what RTK does. So when are you gonna use it? When you want accuracy is the short answer. If you're mapping, you want accuracy. There's not much point mapping without RTK because you're not gonna get that, that really accurate reconstruction of your mapped area. Some sort of general stuff, yeah, maybe you might just wanna get a general idea where a patch of weeds or, or something is. You might wanna get a general idea of the three-dimensional terrain. So maybe you get away with, with not uh, running RTK. But for the, for the ease and the advantages that you get, personally, I think it's a no-brainer. If, you, if you're doing mapping, you wanna be running RTK. For spraying, again, comes down to accuracy. If you're trying to do, run a fruit tree mission, so you've, you've created a three-dimensional flight path within Terra and you're trying to implement that, then yes, you need RTK. One of the main reasons you need RTK for that is not so much the Latin longitude, but it's that height, that, that Z axis. axis. The, the satellite system's pretty good at getting Latin long within, you know, say six meters, but to get that height really accurate is very tricky without RTK. And if we're running a three-dimensional flight path, that's a significant um, safety feature. We're running, you know, two and a half meters, maybe three and a half meters off the ground. We don't have much margin for error there. A six meter differential in our in our height readings 
could mean the difference between crashing and, and a safe flight. That's why we want RTK for those fruit tree missions. In a, you know, an automated flight, it's not as important because usually with a, an automated route mission, we're using the terrain track ability of the drone and therefore it's, it's not as necessary to have that RTK giving us that perfectly accurate position. But you'll know from if you've ever done any um, ground spraying that if you come back the next day to try and start a job again, sometimes that, that start point can be kicked across, you know, six metres is, is what we typically say, but two and a half is pretty, pretty um, regular. If you're running RTK, you're not going to get that drift through the day. So you can be running for, for 12 hours, say, you're going to get 10 mil accuracy every time that drone comes back on target, it's going to be right where it needs to be. In short, RTK is going to give you accuracy. You're only going to know when you're going to need that accuracy. The times you definitely need it are when you're running fruit tree missions, you're trying to do patch spraying, weeds in pasture, target selective spraying, or highly accurate applications. Okay, so you, that's a good question. So you got we got two options for the RTK. You got the RTK3, which is the newer version, and the RTK2. Honestly, I would say most from this point forward, most people are going to be getting the RTK3. The RTK2 has worked. It's been great. It's limited um, in its accuracy and it's limited in the functions that it has. Whereas the RTK3 has the ability to be a, um, a roving device. It has the ability to be a relay device and it, it should have increased accuracy. Yeah, and I think you can also do manual calibration for the RTK3, so... Exactly. Yeah, yeah and there's an app that, that also links in with the RTK3, which allows you to do that um, ground reference pointing. So you can go around and mark your ground reference points. Whereas the RTK2, you, you could do that and you could do it if with the old Phantom remote controls, but now you just hook in with the app and, and you're good to go. So basically your RTK3 is gonna come and require some updating. So you're gonna have to do a couple of things. The first thing you're gonna wanna do when you get it out of the box is to charge it up. Um, so plug it in, just down here we got the USB-C port, plug it in and charge it up full before you start doing anything. Once you've got it charged up, then you can plug it in and you're going to run a program called DJI Assistant 2. Okay, so once you've charged up your RTK3 base station, first of all you're going to download DJI Assistant 2 MG or for Agris. It's on the website, we've got links on our page as well. We're going to get DJI Assistant 2 up. Okay, so here we got DJI Assistant 2 for Agris. We plugged in our RTK3 base station, and then we're going to turn it on. So press, and then press and hold. There we go. Our RTK3 base station's on. Now we can see our RTK3 station has shown up on Assistant 2. We're going to click on that icon. And then it's going to come in with the, the RTK and the latest version. So you can see here that we can upgrade to the current version. So we're going to click Upgrade, Start Update, and then DJI Assistant 2 is just going to upgrade our base station for us. Okay, so once you've charged the battery and you've updated the firmware, you're going to link it to your drone and your controller. Important thing to remember is that the RTK is talking to the drone, like we discussed earlier, so you need your drone on and connected to your remote control. You'll note the three lights along here. The first light there is your battery indicator. At the moment, we're a little bit low. The middle light here is your setting or your function. We're in the green mode at the moment, which is the one we need to be for the 
Agris drones or the mapping drones. And then we've got no satellite single here because we're inside the shed. What we're going to do is we're going to get onto the remote control, we're going to turn it on. Before you go into the aircraft begin, you're going to go to device management down the bottom here in the middle. Click on device management, go to RTK mobile station. Note this is RTK2, okay, we, if we're trying to connect to the RTK2 or the RTK3, we go into the, to this setting, the DRTK2 mobile station. We're going to hit linking, it's found our RTK base station, the RTK3, we're going to hit linking, we're going to want to get that tick and then we're good. Okay, so now we can go into begin and we can see that we've got RTK signal at the top. And if we go into the settings, down to RTK, again, we're going to select RTK2 mobile station. We scroll down and we see we're connected to our RTK3 mobile station. And then you're good to operate. Now, because the RTK isn't outside with the connection, we're going to have issues there. But normally you have your RTK out. You want to have a nice view of the sky. Another thing to remember about your RTK base station is you don't want it to be too far away from you. Within 100 meters, 150 meters is desirable. You want to be able to see those lights, really. The other thing to remember is you don't need that RTK base station necessarily linked to the spray drone the entire time of your operations. You want it linked there at the, t at the point that it takes off. That's the important time. Our flights vary from, you know, 6 to 15 minutes. As long as we're getting signal between the drone and the RTK every sort of couple of minutes, minute and a half to three minutes, you're going to have that correction error is going to be passed on to the devices and you're going to get that accurate flight. But when you take off, that's the important time because the, the GPS system, you imagine it, it boots back up again, it gets the signal from the satellites until it has that correction point, it could be anywhere within that, you know, theoretical six metre diameter. Once it gets that correction error from the RTK base station, it then locks that in and it's going to hold for that, like we say, two or three minutes. So if, if, you mo if you're moving up through, through the day, so you're changing your home point from your original takeoff point to somewhere else, you can't move that RTK base station because that RTK base station is like an anchor. Once you set that anchor, it's useful. It's giving you that correction error. As soon as you pull that anchor up and move, it's no longer relevant for the next flight. Now, if you stop a mission and start a new one, that's fine. You can move the RTK base station. But if you move the RTK base station midway through, you're going to have a disconnect. Yeah. yeah. So you've got, you've got about 90 seconds. So the drone will retain the information from the RTK for about 90 seconds after you remove a battery. So you need to remove a battery and put a new one in within 90 seconds for it to keep functioning on your current anchor point, your current RTK setting. How about the battery for the RTK itself? So the, um, the RTK3 has an internal battery, mm -hmm. which you're just going to charge up at the start of the day. The RTK2 has, takes WB37s. Okay, so that's the basics on RTK, how to link the RTK3. There's a lot more to go through in terms of how to utilize this with everything it's got, like the relay and the mobile um, station and that sort of thing. But that should get you started using the RTK3 base station or RTK2 as a ground reference point for your normal spray operations and mapping. Thanks for watching.